Okay, I know we're short on time. I'll try to make this pretty quick. Um, two gatherings ago, I guess that'd be G4G10, I introduced the concept of go first dice, which myself and a friend had just co-invented, Dr. Robert Ford, who is my friend. He is attending his first G4G. I don't know where he is in the room, but he is somewhere here, I hope. He is the one who actually came up with the configuration by hand, not by computer, of this set of go first dice, four 12-sided dice that have the following property just to summarize. Go first dice are a set of dice in which you can use to figure out who goes first in the game by rolling to see who gets the highest number. Of course, you can use standard dice in this, but you might tie and so forth. Go first dice, A, will never tie. Um, B, it will um, always be fair regardless of which dice you pick. This includes not only the four dice you see here, so if all four dice are rolled against one another, each has exactly a one-fourth chance of rolling the high dice. It is true for every subset of dice you might arbitrarily pick out of this set. So if you're only playing a three-player game, each one takes just one of the dice, maybe these three are picked by the dice, they each roll, they, each player now has exactly a one-third chance of going high. Again, of course, no ties. No ties is the easy part, we just have different numbers on the dice. This also works pairwise. If only two people are playing, each grab a die. At this point, each person has exactly a one-half chance of going first. This was all known four years ago, uh, actually over four years ago. At this point, I had started engraving these dice myself and selling them. Since then, a couple other companies have uh, licensed the idea, and they are selling them. In fact, there are some for sale up at the dealer's room, uh, Math Art Fund, Dice Lab, they're selling some. Uh, also in the UK, they're, they're sold as well. But we've also learned um, quite some interesting things since then. First of all, uh, different types of fairness. These were named go first dice, but it turns out that this particular set of dice has, is much stronger as far as fairness. So what types of different types of fairness could there be? Well, not only do these dice determine who goes first by equal chance of rolling the highest number, you also have an equal chance of rolling the second highest number or the equal chance of rolling the third highest number, depending on how many people are rolling. This we call place fairness, because it can actually be used to determine, hey, if you wanted to see who goes second and so forth. But beyond that, there's even a third type of fairness called permutation fairness. If you roll four dice, of course, there are 24 different outcomes as far as the ordering of who's highest, next highest, and so forth. Of all the possible combinations of rolls of uh, these four 12-sided dice, I guess that would be 12 to the fourth power, all of those outcomes are evenly distributed among the 24 possible permutations. This is extraordinarily fair in the sense that there will never be a case where, oh, if I'm going third, it's more often I'm going third after player B is going second or something like that. The permutations, it is completely fair. So these are the different levels of fairness, and it turned out that the original configuration that we had designed and sold, they are in fact permutation fair, which was a nice bonus because we didn't have to go and rearrange the numbers once we just uh, discovered there were new types of fairness. Other things we learned that are interesting. It turns out you can come up with combinations of fair for permutation, unless I say otherwise, I mean permutation fair now until the end of the talk. Um, the dice don't have to be the same size. They don't all have to be 12-sided dice. We have a set that is a four-sided die, a six-sided die, an eight-sided die, and a 12-sided die. You can pick any subset of those, and against each other, they will be permutation fair, including the whole group. Um, the most common uh, question I get, of course, then is, well, what if you have a game with more than four players? Well, you need five dice. This is the big question that's out there. How can we extend this up to five players or six players or so forth? We haven't been able to do it as elegantly as all same size dice and so forth, but we've managed to find a few solutions, most of these done by mathematical search. Uh, we are definitely using a lot of computer power to try to find some answers, but we haven't done that yet. Um, the best I have been able to do, these are rough prototypes printed by Shapeways. Here is a rather cockamamie set. Five dice, these are permutation fair, meaning any subset works, permutation fair all around. It's a 20-sided die, a 24-sided die, a 36-sided die, a 48-sided die, and a 72-sided die. That's 200 faces all around. It's the smallest number of faces across dice that we know. That works for five players. We don't yet have, well, I could extend this. We found some mathematical ways to extend it up to more players, but then you start running into limitations of geometry. Definitely, as we see, a 72-sided die, die is not very elegant at all. So we're really looking for nice, elegant solutions. 
Another thing I've come up with is <clears throat> using the original four 12-sided dice, I've been able to augment it into color groups. Notice I now, I added a couple greens to go with that green die. Here's these 12-sided dice are all the original ones. Right there, there, there. And I threw in some 20-sided, another six-sided dice. Put the numbers on there so they're e easily added up using thousands and hundreds. This actually works for six players. Um, six player, go first fair, you just choose a whole color group. So maybe one person chooses all the black dice, they roll a 2,311. The other guy, he might roll that, he rolls 1,855. The blue guy rolls this, 6,609. This is permutation go fair all the way across the board, evenly distributed among the 720 different possible permutations. Um, computer searches, we've been trying to find these. All of these I've developed by hand by mathematics with the aid of computers to check things, certainly, but we've not had one that a, a set of five or more players that has just jumped out by computer analysis. Just as a quick anecdote, I know I'm out of time now, but uh, one of the many people who've been studying this with computers, he said, hey, I've been crunching computers for about four months trying to find certain subsets, restricted subsets. After four months, let me give you an idea how, many, how much of the search space I've gone through. If the whole search space was, was the size of the universe, after four months, I just eliminated two atoms of the universe. He said, actually, I eliminate 1.73 atoms of the universe, but we're going to round up to make ourselves feel better about it. So that's what we're looking at, search size. We're still looking at I've recruited a few people here to try to help me out, uh, maybe find some new techniques, but that's where we stand. If you have any questions, you can find me up in the dealer room or wandering around. Thank you very much.